What's up out there? Let's talk about money making in Melver Idol. Now, this is not going to be a guide. This is going to be more of a discussion about making money. There's going to be some advice and practical things you can take away from this, but I don't want to create this as a particular guide for these certain circumstances because this is just kind of a conversation. There's many different ways to approach this. Depends on whether you're in hardcore combat only, standard mode, adventure mode, hardcore mode. I mean, there's a lot of different w things to take into account, what level you are, for what skills, what you haven't worked on, what items you have, what items you don't have. There's so many different ways of approaching this. I wanted to present this more as a conversation of things to consider and things to look for. And this also ex could extend to future expansions that we get and things we don't have because we've gotten some new items with the Atlas of Discovery that change things slightly and are different than what I would have done before. So speaking directly to the question at hand is how to make money. And one of the rep or the reply that somebody provided was agility and thieving, which are very good options. You can make money on combat. You can make money on any skill, just about any skill. There's some things that will help and some items that will help. So let's dive into it. First and foremost, if you want just a Quick and easy answer, thieving itself makes a tremendous amount of money. From thieving the man himself here, you can get the jeweled necklace, the sneakers, and the Chapel Noir. Chapel Noir will double items, has a chance to double items. I don't have it equipped right now, but the sneakers give you extra stealth, which means you're not getting stunned as much. So you want your success rate to be as close or at 100% as possible. So once you get these sneakers, they give you extra stealth to boost that up a little bit. And they give you global gold, 5% global gold. That's not bad. Uh, the Chapel Noir, like I said, doubles items. If you thieve off the woman here, she gives you the fine coin purse. And I think they both give you the jeweled necklace. So the jeweled necklace is also 5% global gold. The fine coin purse is 10% global gold. So you've got 20% global gold bonus right there, right in the first two things of thieving. Uh, the Golden Chief, he gives you this Golden Mask. Now, this is for thieving itself. It gives you additional thieving uh, stealth, plus 20 gold pieces from thieving, and then some mastery and stuff like that. Once you come down here to the Marauder, you can get the Thiever's Cape. That helps out. The actual level 99 skill cape helps out, gives you some stealth. Gives I think it gives you a double chance to, uh, what is it? I better look it up. The th nope, I don't want to buy it. The thieving skill cape increases your interval, it makes you go faster, it gives you, it doubles your gold and 150 stealth. So you're gonna be taking less damage. Now, if you have the Throne of the Herald expansion, again, this is a, if, you know, if you've got this, you can get that. You get the uh, Superior Thieving Skill Cape at level 120. This increases your interval, gives you 150% gold and 270 stealth, plus a 20% chance to avoid the stun interval. So if you fail, if you don't have 100% success rate, with your stealth, you still have a chance to avoid taking damage. So this is well worth getting. And then superior cape of completion and cape of completion kind of rolls all those things together. So going back to thieving, then there's some other items down in here. Like if you have the, uh, the throne of the Herald expansion, the explorer, the adventure treasure hunter, those kind of, these guys have some other items you can get. So pretty much from thieving, you can get, the jeweled necklace, which gives you 5% global gold. Fine coin purse, which is 10% global gold. The sneakers, which is 5% global gold. You get the grappling hook, which gives you stealth and chance to avoid stun, plus speeds your interval up. This is for thieving specifically. The thieving shorts, which is basically like the uh, grappling hook. So these all help out with thieving. You get the signet ring. Uh, go look up how to get the signet ring. It's a very good ring to have. 100% gold granted from all sources except Alt Magic Township and item sales. So you're doubling your money from everything. If you have it in combat, if you have it in non-combat. For thieving specifically, what not? this is not early Slayer items, but once you've leveled up Slayer items a couple of times, two, three, four times, somewhere in there, I can't remember where it's at. But the more you level up the Slayer items, eventually it starts giving you a chance to double items in Thieving. So having a chest plate from the Slayer piece on in Thieving gives you a chance to double items. More items means more money. Chapel Noir doubles items. We talked about that thing. 
Uh, in crafting, you can whip up these Thieves Money Sacks. This is 20% minimum gold, 20% minimum, plus 20% minimum gold from thieving. And this is a consumable, so every time it uh, uses one, it, it runs off. So these items here, and with the Atlas of Discovery, we now have, if I can get this to highlight, we now have this King's Crown, which gives plus 40% global gold. And then we also have this Golden Wreath, which is 100% plus 100% gold when earning, earning gold. So not a percentage, but uh, you get flat 100 gold. But all these items, and this is why I wanted to have this more as a conversation because the Atlas of Discovery added a couple of items. So for thieving, if I don't need the stealth, I can take that Golden mask off and put this King's Crown on, which gives me more global gold. And this, because it's global, it can be used in combat. Now you have to be careful in combat that you're not taking too much damage. So you're gonna wanna have decent gear. You know what I mean? Like you, you can use this stuff, but don't overuse it in combat or wherever. But this is a good thieving arrangement here. So you're going to be making a pretty decent chunk of money. Now, the old standby was to come down here and use the Leprechaun Monkey Synergy, which automatically sells common drops for thieving for 15 times their base sale price. You come down here and thieve this night, it will sell all this common stuff off, the, from the Adamant Helmet to the Dragon Helmet, it will sell all that off and be making decent chunks of money. Now you've got the gear with all the extra percentage, so you can see how this kind of piles up money as you go. There might be better options in here, but you want to make sure your success rate is 100% and you want to make sure that it's, you know, got items worth selling to make that. There's also another good synergy in here, which is the, the Devil Leprechaun one, which gives you a 50% chance to grant 100% gold or 35% chance to grant four times the items or 15% chance to receive nothing at all. I use this one when I'm trying to get specific items. But thieving is a great way to make money. It is a great way to make money in adventure mode. Like that's the first skill you would unlock. And then you can get a lot of items out of it. You can get a lot of stuff out of it and a lot of thieving with things I pointed out from like the um, man, woman, Goldman and Marauder, the items you can get from them. The one caveat to this whole thing is some, at least one, I know the court jester's one, he does not have any common drops at all. So the synergy for the leprechaun and monkey will not work because this only works on common drops. So be careful of that. Now, the next thing you need to worry about is, or maybe the first thing, it depends on where, again, depends on where you're at with your skilling. Astrology is something to look at very closely. And if you get the mastery, the level 99 mastery for the co, um, um, constellation you're going to get extra stealth you're going to get a uh, thieving interval reduction and you're going to get skill and mastery xp out of it and a chance to double items so don't ignore the astrology stuff and there's bonuses throughout for doubling items interval interval reduction for all the different skills astrology is really good to look at summoning has a lot of good uh synergies to go into and agility is another big one if you get all the way down to 120 agility which comes from the throne of the herald expansion base game gets you to 99 throne of the herald gets you to 120 you get 40 percent global gold with the elite pillar of expertise you get that's from the throne of the herald the base game gives you the pillar of generosity with the 10 percent global gold so there and then there's a whole bunch of options in here for uh do i have any of these taken here's 20 percent gold from thieving here's another one in here i think it's this one uh 20 another 20 percent gold from thieving so set your obstacles up here's one that's global gold three percent right off the bat obstacle one so you could slightly dip your toes into agility and get three percent global gold that's global that is global that is combat that is non-combat it's everything except item sales usually it's except item sales so there's a lot of good things to have from astrology summoning and agility now if you go into say wood cutting there's a synergy and the reason why i talk about summoning is there's a synergy for receiving a, a gem per wood cutting action that's good you can reduce your wood cutting interval. You can sell magic trees. They make a decent chunk of money. A lot of these other trees with the Throne of the Herald expansion also sell for good money. Fishing, um, magic fish, I think sell for good money. 
Whales sell for good money, but they're slow to catch. A lot of the stuff down here in the Throne of the Herald sells for decent money. Fire making, you can actually get the synergy to receive a diamond per action if you want to sell diamonds. Um, I think there's 400% uh, of log base sale price granted as gold when burnt in fire making. So that's a good one to have. And then you start throwing in all of this stuff like this crown, this wreath, the coin purse, the necklace, all the stuff that adds global gold, you're going to be making decent money off of this. Fire making also has, if we come back to, where do I have that? There is an amulet. This one here gives you 20%, plus 20% gold from fire making and a little bit, well, less skill, but you make more money. So fire making has some good options. I don't usually use cooking for making money because you have to fish it up and then uh, cook it. I use cooking for food for combat, so I don't really use it there. Mining, a good early strategy is buy the gym gloves, the gym mining gloves, use those. They, I think you buy them for like 50,000 and by the time you, usually you're gonna get about 55, $60,000 worth of gems out of it. So you can sell it off, make a little profit, buy another glove, and then rinse and repeat until you have whatever money you're looking for. That's a good early game strategy. Uh, smithing, smithing dragon javelins, that used to be a really good uh, opportunity to make a lot of money. Dragon javelins sell for a decent price. You're probably not going to use them for anything. Most I, I don't really ever use them. Once I get crossbows, I'm, that's all I use for ranged. So dragon javelins sell for a ton of money. Corundum, augite, meteorite, all the all the ones javelins you can get from these sell for even more money. Uh, we talked about thieving, fletching. Again, you can sell javelins to make money. You can even sell like some gem tip bolts, uh, jade stone bolts sell for a lot. They're hard to get, but they they sell for a lot of money. Diamond bolts sell for a lot. Although I might be more inclined to use these in combat. Uh, crafting. <clears throat> as you're going through craft, as you're going through and killing stuff, you're going to be generating all the different hide as you're killing off dragons and stuff like that. If you turn that into items, these all sell for decent money. And there's a trick where you can actually go and buy, I think it's green dragon hides and sell them because you go get the leather and some, you get the leather, you buy the green dragon hide and sell it. It actually makes money. So you can go kill a bunch of cows sell buy the green dragon hides and sell them because you have to have two leather for it something like that it's kind of a convoluted process but it's another early game one that you can do with hardcore combat only but selling any of the dragon hide stuff especially if you're trying to get crafting levels and things like that these are great opportunities to make money you don't have to upgrade anything you can just make green dragon hide van braces and sell them or green dragon hide bodies and sell them and they make decent money they're not great but they make decent money to sell so rings, I would probably put into the synergies uh, or the tablets for um, the monkey tablet. But then you've got bags. You can make these different bags. The Thief's money sack comes from here. A lot of these double items or make things go, make skills go faster. Hardwood armor sells for decent money. I haven't really looked at the, the these items here for money making. These are difficult to get, the special items and the imbued materials. So I wouldn't necessarily look at those for selling stuff, but... As you're leveling crafting up, if you're going getting up into the 99 or the 100 to 120 level range, these things can all be sold. You're leveling up the skill and selling the items off for good money. So those are a good option. Rune crafting doesn't really have much to make money on. I don't really use it for this. I basically go in and make standard runes, and that's kind of it for this. Herb lore, you can make money like on uh, diamond luck potions. These sell for a lot, but you have to weigh the need for using diamond luck potions versus the cost of you know making money off of them. Uh, barren tail herbs from farming, these make a, a good chunk of money. Again, they're a material that make high end crafting or uh, not crafting, but high end herb lore items and stuff like that. Do you really want to sell them off and make the money or sell a portion of them off and make the money? I've certainly sold like a half a stack of Baron Toe and made, you know, a million gold or whatever for whatever I needed for that moment and then moved on. Uh, agility. Agility makes money as it runs. The thing with agility is you want to make your interval as slow, as quick as possible. Like right now, this is two full minutes to run all 10 courses. I would try to get this down to a minute or under a minute as much as possible with the highest gold. 
So this is making 220,000 over two minutes. If I could make, say, 200,000 in a minute, that's much better. You know what I mean? So you kind of want to weigh those options. But some obstacles some obstacles make more money, some go faster, and they're not always both the same. Some may go really slow, but make a lot of money. You kind of got a spreadsheet warrior this a little bit to min-max the whole thing. But as you're leveling up agility, it wouldn't hurt to make the interval as slow, as quick as possible with as much money as you can make. Uh, you also want to have the performance enhancing potions. This increases your interval or reduces your interval, I should say. Uh, the Traps Potion is new from Throne of the Herald. This one gives you gold from any obstacles that contain a negative modifier. And that helps a little bit. That can raise your gold a little bit in there. And then again, with all these global items in here, that is going to make even more money. Thieving as a skill, as passively making money, is better than agility. But agility is probably better than all the other ones passively making money. I say that, but like I said, dragon javelins, which go through mining, smithing, and then fletching can make a lot of money, but you have to go through mining, uh, smithing, and fletching to get that done. If that And wood cutting, because you got to have the wood. So where you're making direct money from agility, it's taking four skills worth of time to get dragon javelins out, if that makes sense. But they do make money, and you're leveling up all those skills or working on the mastery for everything all at once. So different things to consider. Uh, we talked about different summoning intervals or summoning synergies. There's a lot of synergies for doubling items, for reducing the interval. All of that stuff is going to produce more items faster and make money. Alt Magic has a great option with these item alchemy bits in here item alchemy one two and three the best one is item alchemy three or three is in the base game i believe item alchemy four is the last one from atlas of, or um throne of the herald this one gives item alchemy three you pick an item and it sells that uh, it converts that item to 160 percent of the item's base sale price and that does not include all the different bonuses you can get on this so you can actually make a pretty decent chunk of money so this is going to produce, what's it sell? For one gold, it's going to sell for 11. I probably have some better options that are all locked. Item Alchemy 4, this is 250%. So if you get 120 magic, uh, you're going to sell this same one gold shrimp for 17 gold. Now you take an item that's worth 250,000 gold, you're going to be making a lot of money off of this thing. And that's another good option is combat. Now combat... You go in and start getting into these god dungeons and stuff like that. These items sell for, let's see, a piece of god gear sells for 1 million. So I have 20 of these. That's 20 million gold. So you start collecting up items. You can start. Now, god dungeons are fairly far into the base game, but they can generate a lot of money. You also have things like the confetti crossbow, which grants gold based on the, number, the hit you do. Uh, what else do we have? I noted a few. The gloves of silence work in combat. The almighty loot that you hit something and that does gives you 200% gold. I don't see it right off the top here, but here it is. The almighty loot two plus 200% gold from monsters. So you start combining that in combat with some of these other global items. Now, again, you're going to lose damage reduction and stuff by swapping out all these different items, but you can make a lot of money with them. And of course, uh, having the agility uh, pillars, the elite pillar and the pillar of generosity. You get these things set, you're going to get more gold. It all kind of blends together at some point and you can make some decent money. Now you don't necessarily have to have your combat set up for making money. You can have combat set up for combat. If you're running the God dungeons, all the glove, you're guaranteed one glove, boot, helmet, something like that. Every time you clear that God dungeon, those are worth a chunk of money every time, and you can sell those. A lot of dungeons have a lot of things that drop stuff that sell for quite a bit of money. The Ancient Crossbow is difficult to get, but it sells for $500,000 apiece. Uh, the Ethereal Longbows, these sell for $15 million apiece. Now, these are way into Throne of the Herald, but you can see where a lot of this stuff starts adding up money very quickly. Um, 
the Aris gears, 400,000. I thought those were 200,000. I feel like they were. But anyway, to sum all of this up, there. oh, and that doesn't even get into Township. I forgot about Township. You've got stuff you can trade out. You've got this passively makes money as it goes. Once you've got it fully set up and you've got the uh, the trading buildings and stuff going, trading posts, you're going to start making money passively. Like this just makes money as it goes. So to wrap all of this up, video is probably a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but there's so many different ways of making money that I wanted to just talk about them in general and kind of run through a lot of the items. All, and I've made a video about how, you know, somebody was asking whether the expansions were worth it. All of the different expansion, the base game and the two expansions all have different components that come together, like even just in thieving here. Uh, if I click on thieving. So the items in these first three sections of NPCs to thieve are from the base game. You come down here, the items from the Explorer and Adventure and all these, these come from the Throne of the Herald. The Explorer gives you this grappling hook and the thieving shorts. So those are good from just the, the base game and those the first expansion. The second expansion gave us the Golden Wreath, which is plus 100 gold globally, and the King's Crown, which is another 40% global gold. So you can see how all the expansions start kind of playing together and giving more items and more things to use. So any future expansions would probably have more gear, more synergies, more options, more astrology or agility or potentially other skills like astrology and agility that give money or global bonuses to everything. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this more of a conversation than an actual guide, because hopefully this lets you see there's potential for making money. There's a lot better money makers and there's a lot worse money makers, but you can make money anywhere across the pretty much anywhere across the way, depending on what you're doing and what gear you have and what you get. So, Keep an eye out for some of these items. Some of them are in the shop, like the confetti crossbows up under the Slayer section. You can buy that right there. It's 150,000 gold um, Slayer coins, so you got to work to get it. But there are a lot of things you can get. Oh, another thing, another good idea is to just sell resupplies. You can buy this for 10,000 Slayer coin and then sell off the stuff you're not going to use, like the magic bones or something like that or the, the bolts or whatever. You can sell some of that stuff. So if you can generate Slayer coin, like you're generating Slayer coin, you can go buy these things and then sell them off. So there's a lot of different ways of making money depending on what skill you're doing, depending on what, what you're working on in the game. You can take a lot of opportunities to make money. Hopefully that's all made sense. I know there's, there's a lot to this and this video could be an hour or two long if we went into all the different methods, but I wanted to make something relatively quick to kind of bust through this and get some ideas on how to make money. Anyway, that will do it for this one. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.